Hi everyone, welcome to Project Rosalind. If you're new to Project Rosalind, we're a student-led organization that aims to promote science education for elementary and middle school students. You can find out more about us at our website, projectrosalind.weebly.com. In this video, we'll be learning about some basic ecology, like food chains, food webs, and the energy pyramid. Before we get started, please take a moment and visit the Google Form link in the description box below to take a pre-video quiz. The results are completely anonymous, and they will help us understand how effective our videos are. Let's get started. Before we begin, take a moment to pause this video and ask yourself, what is a food chain? Well, a food chain is basically a series or a chain of organisms that are dependent on the previous organism for a source of food. Here's a simple example of a food chain. We start with a field of grass, and then we have a rabbit that eats some of this grass, followed by a fox that eats the rabbit, and a lion that eats the fox. As it turns out, we can actually label each organism and put them into their own categories. The first way we can do this is by separating the autotrophs and the heterotrophs. Now, what do these terms even mean? Well, autotrophs are also known as producers because they can produce their own food. With that being said, we know that the grass has to be an autotroph because it takes energy from sunlight and converts it into sugar by doing photosynthesis. The rest of the organisms, which are all animals, are known as heterotrophs because they can't make their own energy. Heterotrophs are also known as consumers because they need to eat food, like other plants or animals, to get energy. We can also classify the consumers as primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers. It's important to remember that primary means first, secondary means second, and tertiary means third. If we know this, then we can label the rabbit as the primary consumer because it's the first consumer that eats the producer, which is the grass. Primary consumers are usually herbivores, since they have to eat the producers, which are usually plants. Then, the secondary consumer has to be the fox, and the tertiary consumer must be the lion. As you might have guessed, secondary and tertiary consumers are usually omnivores or carnivores, since they have to eat meat. Before we move on to the next concept, let's add two more important things to our food chain, the energy source and the decomposers. In this food chain, the energy source has to be the sun, because the plant producer needs the energy from sunlight to do photosynthesis and produce sugar. Because of this, let's add the sun right here. Another thing we need to talk about is the decomposers. In a food chain, decomposers help break down dead or decaying organisms and recycle the nutrients into the soil for the producers to use. Some common examples of decomposers include mushrooms, worms, and insects like flies. Since decomposers can break down anything that is dead, we can't just put decomposers at the very end of the food chain. Instead, we have to put decomposers along the side of the food chain like this. So now that we've learned about food chains, take a moment to pause this video and ask yourself, what would happen if we put multiple food chains together? Well, instead of just one chain, you get a food web. This is because a producer can be eaten by multiple consumers and one consumer can eat many different types of food. For example, we have here that rabbits are primary consumers that eat grass. However, there are other primary consumers of grass, like grasshoppers. Now, we can add a second food chain involving grasshoppers, and we end up with a food web that looks something like this. Clearly, this food web is a lot more complicated than the food chain we originally started with and food webs can get really confusing if too many organisms are added, so we'll stop here. In this food web, there are two special organisms at the very top, the lion and the hawk. These two organisms are the top predators of the food web, so they are also known as apex predators. Finally, one last concept that is super important is the energy pyramid. The energy pyramid is a pyramid that shows the flow of energy between different trophic levels. Trophic levels are groups of organisms with the same function in the food chain, so different levels include producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. Usually, around 10% of the energy in one trophic level is transferred to the next one, so as we go to higher levels, the amount of energy decreases. That's why the energy pyramid gets smaller and smaller as you get closer to the top. So today, we learned about some basic ecology involving food chains, food webs, and the energy pyramid. 
We hope you learned something interesting and please comment any questions you have down below. Now that you've finished this video, please take our post video quiz linked in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and turn on notifications. See you next time!